Anything you avoid in life will come back, over and over again, until you're willing to face it, to look deeply into its true nature. If you think that people should be nice to one another, then by all means be nice. But when you project that belief onto the people and the world around you as if it were an objective reality, or worse still, as if it were their job to be nice to you, you put yourself at odds with what is, and suffering will surely follow. When we see the world through our thoughts, we stop experiencing life as it really is and others as they really are. When I have a thought about you, that's something I've created. I've turned you into an idea. In a certain sense. If I have an idea about you that I believe, I've degraded you. I've made you into something very small. This is the way of human beings, this is what we do to each other. We end up putting so much attention onto our image that we remain in a continuous state of protecting or improving our image in order to control how others see us. Because of an innocent misunderstanding you think that you are a human being in the relative world seeking the experience of oneness. But actually you are the one expressing itself as the experience of being a human being when we believe what we think, when we take our thinking to be reality, we will suffer. Awareness isn't something we own, awareness isn't something we possess. Awareness is actually what we are, at first it seems as if begoing follows becoming. But look even closer and you will see that there are only flashes of lightning illuminating the empty sky, beyond even any teaching, though, the aspect of spiritual life that is the most profound is the element of grace. Grace is something that comes to us when we somehow find ourselves completely available, when we become open-hearted and open-minded and are willing to entertain the possibility that we may not know what we think we know. Let go of all ideas and images in your mind, they come and go and aren't even generated by you. So why pay so much attention to your imagination when reality is for the realizing right now, the important thing is allowing the whole world to wake up. Part of allowing the whole world to wake up is recognizing that the whole world is free, everybody is free to be as they are. Until the whole world is free to agree with you or disagree with you, until you have given the freedom to everyone to like you or not like you, to love you or hate you, to see things as you see them or to see things differently until you have given the whole world its freedom, you'll never have your freedom, as I often tell my students. The person you'll have the hardest time opening to and truly loving without reserve is yourself. Once you can do that, you can love the whole universe unconditionally. Real meditation is not about mastering a technique, it's about letting go of control. This is meditation. Anything else is actually a form of concentration. Meditation and concentration are two different things. Concentration is a discipline. Concentration is a way in which we are actually directing or guiding or controlling our experience. Meditation is letting go of control letting go of guiding our experience in any way whatsoever. The foundation of true meditation is that we are letting go of control, as long as you are trying to become. Trying to get somewhere, trying to attain something, you are quite literally moving away from the truth itself. When you get out of the driver's seat, 
you find that life can drive itself, that actually life has always been driving itself. When you get out of the driver's seat, it can drive itself so much easier, it can flow in ways you never imagined. Life becomes almost magical. The illusion of the me is no longer in the way. Life begins to flow, and you never know where it will take you. All that is necessary to awaken to yourself as the radiant emptiness of spirit is to stop seeking something more or better or different, and to turn your attention inward to the awake silence that you are. When someone tells you, I love you, and then you feel, oh, I must be worthy after all, that's an illusion. That's not true. Or someone says, I hate you, and you think, oh, God, I knew it, I'm not very worthy, that's not true either. Neither one of these thoughts hold any intrinsic reality. They are an overlay. When someone says, I love you, he is telling you about himself, not you. When someone says, I hate you, she is telling you about herself, not you. World views are self-views, literally. My speaking is meant to shake you awake, not to tell you how to dream better. The truth is the only thing you'll ever run into that has no agenda, time to cash in your chips put your ideas and beliefs on the table. See who has the bigger hand you or the mystery that pervades you. Time to scrape the mind's shit off your shoes. Undo the laces that hold your prison together and dangle your toes into emptiness. Once you've put everything on the table. Once all of your currency is gone and your pockets are full of air. All you've got left to gamble with is yourself. Go. Ahead. Climb up onto the velvet top of the highest stakes table. Place yourself as the bet. Look God in the eyes and finally for once in your life. Lose. Love is a flame that burns everything other than itself. It is the destruction of all that is false and the fulfillment of all that is true. Enlightenment is nothing more than the complete absence of resistance to what is. End of story. We realize, often quite suddenly, I that our sense of self, which has been formed and constructed out of our ideas, beliefs and images, is not really who we are. It doesn't define us, it has no center, in the end it's all very simple. Either we give ourselves to silence or we don't. Enlightenment is a destructive process. It has nothing to do with becoming better or being happier. Enlightenment is the crumbling away of untruth. It's seeing through the facade of pretense. It's the complete eradication of everything we imagine to be true. If you prefer smoke over fire then get up now and leave, for I do not intend to perfume your mind's clothing with more sooty knowledge, no, I have something else in mind. Today I hold a flame in my left hand, and a sword in my right. There will be no damage control today. For God is in a mood to plunder your riches and fling you nakedly into such breathtaking poverty that all that will be left of you will be a tendency to shine. So don't just sit around this flame choking on your mind, for this is no campfire song to mindlessly mantra yourself to sleep with. Jump now into the space between thoughts and exit this dream before I burn the damn place down. The truth is that you already are what you are seeking. Do not think that enlightenment is going to make you special, it's not. 
If you feel special in any way, then enlightenment has not occurred. I meet a lot of people who think they are enlightened and awake simply because they have had a very moving spiritual experience. They wear their enlightenment on their sleeve like a badge of honor. They sit among friends and talk about how awake they are while sipping coffee at a cafe. The funny thing about enlightenment is that when it is authentic, there is no one to claim it. Enlightenment is very ordinary, it is nothing special. Rather than making you more special, it is going to make you less special. It plants you right in the center of a wonderful humility and innocence. Everyone else may or may not call you enlightened, but when you are enlightened the whole notion of enlightenment and someone who is enlightened is a big joke. I use the word enlightenment all the time, not to point you toward it but to point you beyond it. Do not get stuck in it.